I'm going to switch over to recurring invoices. This is another one of my babies, and I absolutely love it because uh, this is where you get to collect money. Um, one of the very cool things about Synchro, again, is that we design everything in order to save you time. And of course, we rely on you at that point to go off with that time and go sell stuff. Like if you're not selling stuff, I'm not doing my job if I give you a bunch of time and you're not utilizing it to the fullest of your ability. But this is an area where we will save you a ton of time, which is automated billing. And the reason we can save you a ton of time is because the way our recurring invoice system works, we will dynamically count virtually anything. And that means at the time the invoice fires, we can go and find exactly how many machines a customer has or how many employees they have if you're billing by employee. And we will bill out that exact amount times whatever you want to charge per item. Um, in the next month, if you increment or decrement machines or you increment and decrement employees, we don't care and you shouldn't either, as long as you're keeping up in the system and your uh, the amount of assets and employees you have there is accurate, this will automatically update the count itself and adjust the invoice accordingly. So here's a couple of the ways that we do that. We have an asset counter. So as a very basic example, I would, as my MSP, you can do this however you like, I'd bill it under labor. This is basically a, a contract where I wanna bill $100 an asset. So I can do it fixed if I wanted. This is how most systems work. And I say, okay, I'm going to bill $100 every machine. So they're going to get billed $500 a month. I know everyone who's listening to this has either realized that they've been giving their customer free stuff for the past 12 months and didn't realize. This happens with AV licenses, Office 365 licenses, or your customer is going to be the one that catches it because you're overbilling. They'll always notice that. They may not notice the underbilling component of it, but that's the way it works. Um, and again, this kind of sucks. It's a lot of manual management. This isn't something we want folks to do. So... You can actually look at any kind of asset type. This is stuff that I have added into my system. We're going to look at Synchro device, which is any device that has the Synchro agent installed on it. But you can also add your own custom devices. So if you want to charge for printers or networking equipment or whatever you wanted to do, we can dynamically count that as well. So what this is going to do, it's going to say, okay, I'm counting 12 machines this month. Great, $1,200 line item on their invoice. Next month, if it's 10, $1,000 line item on their invoice. It's going to happen for you. Now, I know everybody's already asking, well, I bill one price for servers and I bill another price for workstations. Cool. That's where you can bring in this saved asset search. So I'm going to bring up my workstation search and it's only going to apply to this customer. And I'm going to bill everybody $100 for every workstation that they have. Now I'm going to add a second line item and I'm going to say, I'm going to bill everybody's server or this particular customer server. You can do this on a per customer basis, $150 for every server. So it doesn't have to be the same price and we can dynamically count as many things as you want on the same recurring invoice. Now for folks that don't do managed services this way, they bill by employee instead, we've got you covered too. So, oh, live demo, hold on a second here. Let me try that again. Okay, here we go. So um, same thing, we can say, I'm gonna bill for $100 for every employee that you have. Now that can be problematic if you have a large customer who's consistently like onboarding or offboarding employees, just a, a normal course of business. So you can even say, I only want to bill for uh, employees that have a particular custom field value. So as an example, I added one for employee status and I want to track people like when they've been offboarded. I want to know all the stuff I did for them in case the customer ever asked me, I have a history of that. Well, I'm not going to bill my inactive ones. I'll just send them to inactive in the system. So I'm going to say, bill all the employees that are active and this will just bill $100 times those. You can literally bill for anything you want. The last thing I want to show really quick is uh, Brandy earlier on mentioned that we have a uh, our native integration with Splash Shop. And one of the benefits of that is that this is free for all of your techs. Um, there is an optional paid service, which is $5 per contact, which will allow your end users work from home access. And it's $5 per contact. It's not $5 per asset. So if they have 50 assets and they need to access all 50, you can give those rights to that person. It's the same $5 fee. And we will go in and we'll even count that. So if, well, definitely don't want to bill hundred dollars for that. We're probably not going to do very well, but if we bill $10 a contact, uh, this will dynamically count that and it will go ahead and add it to every line item, uh, every recurring invoice line item. We also have a couple other very cool features for MSPs that do these. And I'm going to go over these really quick as well. The first one is, uh, in my MSP, we did a lot of hybrid work. We would either do uh, like block hour contracts where the customers regularly went over their hour allotment in a given month, or it would be like, we're going to give you remote remote support. That's included for $500 a month. Every on-site service is $150 an hour, whatever it is. 
Well, it's super annoying and a super big time waster. Every single time I have an invoice, I have to generate it. I have to go through this approved post model. I have to send them all out. And I'm constantly doing that all month. Well, you don't have to with our system. So you can actually have recurring invoices designed to pick up any pending ticket charges that you might have, throw them all on one, one recurring invoice at any cadence you want. So this customer is like, hey, I want to be billed once a month for all your stuff on the 25th. You can do it. If the customer says, I want to be billed every Friday uh, without exception, you can do that too. This is what does that. You can even go in and say, I only want to do it for certain ticket statuses. So for me, I never build unless a ticket was resolved, unless it was like super long project work. So here I'm just going to bill against the resolved tickets and leave everything else out. Um, also allows me to do uh, sorts by any kind of information I want. So if you want this appearing a certain way on the invoice, you can, you can do that too. Now I was talking about block hour contracts before, and the most common way to do that is to say, uh, Scott's my customer, Scott gets 10 hours of service a month, and that's included for whatever, thousand bucks a month. Now, if Scott goes over that, <laughs> $500 a month, sorry, I already lost Scott, so I think I had to drop my price here. <laughs> um, if he goes over that in any given month, I'll probably give him a discount on those, probably $50 an hour, or based on Scott's reaction, we'll say $25 an hour, just so I can make sure he, he stays a customer. Um, what this will do is, most times at the end of that billing period, if there's hours left over, they will expire and then they get refreshed on uh, the next month. So this allows you to do that. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to, but this allows you to do it or every time you're billing for that set of block hours, this will wipe anything that's existing and just start them from fresh. And then the last thing here is the uh, keeping prices in sync. We get that asked this all the time where people get really, really into our recurring uh, invoice system because it works so well. And they're like, oh, damn, I have to go change a price on this thing. Do I have to go back and change all my recurring invoices? You don't. As long as you've got this checked, it will keep these prices in sync with your current table of products. Um, and then the last thing with our invoices is that we are uh, fully integrated with multiple payment processors. So if you want to be billing against a credit card, uh, you can store credit cards on file with, with every customer. You can also set up ACH with different customers. So if you want, your recurring invoice can also handle all the billing. So it's just going to invoice, it will bill them, and you're good to go, and you don't have to worry about anything on your own.